Now we talk about the third category in the four treasures of a scholar's or artist's studio. That is the brushes. The brushes can be divided into um, soft and stiff, two uh, major kinds. The difference uh, between Chinese brush and uh, Western watercolor brush is uh, uh, the they use natural animal hair with the, the natural tip. So they never cut the our good Chinese brush maker never cut the top of the you know the the hair actually is not a, a even uh, cylinder. It, it it has the natural you know tip if you look uh, under the magnifier. So they don't cut out the hair in the process of uh, brush making. So it, it has a very um, kind of uh, oily, uh, sharp tip. That is the major difference between Chinese brush and uh, uh, other kind of brushes. Um, there are two kinds of uh, brush, uh, the stiff hair brush and the soft hair brush. The stiff hair brush are made of uh, wolf hair. Uh, it's a general wolf is a general name for stiff hair. The soft hair brush is made of sheep hair, and sheep hair is actually the most of uh, the soft brush are made of uh, sheep or goat hair. So they're in white. The white uh, kind of uh, hair is usually the soft hair brush. It could be very small. Uh, and big. The brush also come in between. There's a, what we call the combination brush. This one you might see. Uh, it has the both the stiff hair which is in black and the, the white hair is the soft. Uh, you may also notice that uh, they come in different uh, lengths. So the soft brush is shorter and the uh, uh, the, the tip part or the core is longer. The stiff hair, when it's wet, you can see. Just wet it. You can see the, the black tip um, is uh, longer than the, the heel, uh, the, the outer part, the soft hair. So, this is a combination brush um, enhanced with a hard core. Um, in function, the brush has a tip and a heel. In most the stiff hair brush, the tip is pointed. Um, and the most the soft hair brush, the tip is less pointed. And the heel is uh, uh, more uh, full and uh, can hold more moisture for washes or coloring. Um, so the lining brush is always the stiff brush. Uh, the wolf brush and the soft brush or the sheep hair brush is uh, always uh, the, for washing or coloring. <clears throat> the combination brush uh, is usually for um, lining and uh, it has the tip, it's a very sharp tip that's good for um, drawing the lines um, and the, the soft hair in the heel holds the moisture so it gives a uh, more supply of uh, ink or color and it will last longer um, that's why it's very um, useful and different from uh, the stiff hair brush because stiff hair brush uh, cannot hold as much as uh, the soft hair so the combination has both um, the soft hair in the in the heel, and uh, um, the stiff hair for uh, the pointed tip for lining. Um, you might wondering why some brushes are uh, long and some are uh, short, uh, because the um, the fat or I call it a mop shaped brush. The sin uh, cynical shaped brush it gives uh, more um, 
power on the heel, so you can uh, you can you can paint with the heel more than the tip. Uh, with a long bristle brush, because the west, the middle part of the brush is very soft, and you can only use the tip part. So uh, unless you slant the brush down uh, to use the, the side, so it gives a, a very wide range of uh, uh, variation. So that's a uh, the main difference why we have the long hair and the short hair. Um, so the long, the short hair one is more used. Uh, is a well, it actually is a personal preference. I will leave it uh, uh, for your personal preference. It's very hard to explain. You got to try for yourself to tell the difference, and. Uh, um, also, there are brushes designed for uh, freehand, uh, spontaneous style painting. And some brushes are good for uh, elaborated style, gongbi, gongbi uh, style of painting, elaborated style. Um, some brushes like uh, the white cloth, the combination brush, is good for both. And uh, in terms of uh, subject matters, you have heard uh, bamboo and orchid brush, maybe. Um, also, uh, there are, um, I call it a peony brush, or chrysanthemum brush, um, and so on. You can find it on our website. We have description for each kind of brush, what's the best use or suitable uh, for what uh, subject matters. That's for your uh, information. And they are um, the brush um, price varies uh, depending on the quality, not only on the uh, hair, but also uh, the handle. There are some specialty brushes I like to mention. Uh, one very special one is uh, the rooster feather brush. This is a special brush made of. Uh, rooster feathers and it gives a very different kind of uh, uh, use it has a, I call it a loosening uh, or it's a very how to say it's between uh, soft and stiff because the feather has a hard uh, stem in the middle right the soft uh, uh, feather is also like a you know, can hold lots, lots of moisture, so it, it gives you many uh, random effects that uh, you know some so you can only achieve with this kind of brush. And good for um, from landscape to flower it depends on uh, your what you use. You can you can also choose the brush based on the size of the painting. So they're very tiny brushes like a small whistle brush and we also have uh, you can see they are uh, very uh, mini brushes I call it uh, you can use for uh, details on a small painting or um, even on art uh, trade cards like a business card size painting and uh, some crafts are finger nail painting and some other crafts, uh, mini miniature uh, painting. Uh, for our, you know, Chinese brush painting, it's also used to, like you do insects, like bees, uh, bumming, bumming bees, or uh, butterflies. This kind of uh, sub, uh, insects, and also the uh, stamens in the flower. One thing I like to. Uh, emphasize is that there's no bad brush. You can always find a good use of uh, any brush, even toothbrush. Um, I, I have about 200 uh, brushes uh, on hand normally uh, for, for use. Uh, for every painting I usually use about five to seven brushes. 
because you need a different brush for different color, the cold color, the warm color, or um, white uh, purple uh, you know, flower brush uh, and a leaf brush. Uh, so you, you better have you know, more brush than less. Um, but you can accumulate that over time. Because I never threw away my brush, that's why I come, come up to this uh, number 200 brushes here. Um, just tell you some story that uh, I have. This brush I used for more than 40 years. Because this is when my first brush I used in my primary school calligraphy class. And uh, um, later when I learned landscape painting, I need a broken brush to do the split brush uh, dots on the, you know, the trees. I just cut it and uh, combined three little brushes together uh, to make, you know, make a, your own brush for that use. You can use a non-brush material to, you know, to make it, or you can use the, uh, 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 your uh, old uh, watercolor brush to, for this purpose, particularly the dot brush. And uh, another brush I like to share with you is uh, um, maybe this two. These are originally uh, good bamboo and orchid brush. The stiff hair brush, come on, uh, bamboo and orchid brush. Uh, when they become uh, less pointed, you can split. I trimmed it. Uh, in this case, I trimmed it and uh, made it. Uh, you can also trim a, a soft brush like this, and uh, to create some kind of angle, uh, so it will give you a special kind of stroke from a very white to very thin, rapid changes uh, with this kind of brush. I learned from uh, my teacher also. Um, this, uh, this kind of uh, um, hard and I call the hard heel brush. Uh, normally you wash your brush after each use uh, right away um, before it got hardened. Um, but uh, you can that uh, you leave the ink in the brush without washing, and uh, the next day it come hardened. Um, then you only open the front with water. Then you paint. So this this bottom part is uh, is hardened. It's a uh, very stiff, not like a rock hard. Um, you I never wash this part. So this is good for landscape painting. Um, for do the you know very uh, rough dry brush strokes. So you don't need any uh, reservoir in this kind of brush. So this is only, uh, you know, you can use the old brush. Don't use your new one for this purpose. So you have to wait if you're a new student to accumulate this kind of uh, personal uh, self-made tools. Finally, uh, I'd like to introduce you some new uh, invention uh, we have we have to keep our mind open for new um, inventions that come out because uh, uh, that is why each, uh, each time period is different from uh, the other in the history of art. So now we have this uh, water brush paints. Um, water brushes I like to introduce. Uh, they are very convenient when you paint outside. So you can um, put your water or ink uh, in the reservoir in the, in the handle. And this is a, what we call the piston filler. The handle itself is a piston. You can use the air pump uh, principle. So you can drive the air out and then suck in the water. And uh, so you have a water supply right inside the handle of the brush. When you paint outside, you don't have to carry a jar of water. Um, so the the bristle on this uh, brush is the same as uh, the regular Sumi brush. You can see the uh, same natural bristle. It's uh, uh, you can use it indoor just like a regular brush, um, and uh, there's a, a magic. Uh, what we call this uh, magic uh, cloth. 
uh, disappearing class. It's good that you use this uh, as a practice pay, uh, brush and a uh, surface so you can practice your painting um, without wasting ink and the paper and without uh, uh, the pressure you know the kind of uh, anxieties you, you so it gives you very free um, how to say mood enjoy the freedom of uh, painting on this kind of uh, uh, practice uh, paper because uh, uh, it disappears no matter how bad but uh, if you paint good it also disappears so this is a very um, soothing very uh, peaceful kind of exercise no pressure so you can you can practice the uh, you know, I'm doing upside down by the way uh, for you to see so this kind of uh, brush is good for that so while you're watching my demo you can use a water brush uh, together with uh, water, water painting magic cards to practice. See, it disappears in front of your eyes, right? Uh, it takes uh, three minutes to get completely dry, so you can start over again. Um, you can do this uh, without worry about uh, mess up your computer desk or stain your table. So, because you only use pure water to paint uh, like this, so there's no. Uh, it's very easy. You can you can do it any time. I mean, very um, useful because you don't have to prepare your know, table, you know, set up your uh, studio. You you can, all you need is a brush and a piece of uh, cloth, magic cloth, to start practicing. After you do the strokes. Uh, after you develop the skill of controlling the brush with the water, then you can you know, um, do your uh, exercise on the rice paper with the real ink and the color. The next we're going to introduce you uh, the last of the four treasures of the artist's studio, which is rice paper.